Hi everyone, welcome to today's edition of Google Cloud Fundamentals Core Infrastructure Lab. For today, we are exploring Cloud One. Hello, Cloud One. Cloud One is a managed compute platform that enables you to run stateless containers that are invocable via HTTP request. Cloud One is serverless, that means it obscurates server creation and it also abstracts away all infrastructure management so you can focus on what matters most, which is actually building great application. Cloud One is built from K native, letting you choose to run your containers either fully managed with Cloud One or in your Google Kubernetes engine with Cloud One on GKE. So for this lab, we'll just explore a simple containerized application image and we'll deploy it to Cloud One. Let's get started. Start our lab. After starting our lab, we'll open this in an incognito window. Then we'll copy the lab credentials. After copying the lab credentials, the first thing we are going to do in this lab is to set up our requirements and we've basically done that. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to activate our cloud shell. So to activate our cloud shell, let's go back to our windows. So when we click on activate cloud shell, so the next thing we have to do is we have to click on gcloud auth list. That is to activate the account name. So this, the gcloud auth list will list the active account name in our project. So I'm going to authorize this. To list the project ID, and you can see this is the project ID. Of, so above is the credential of our account, and this is the project ID. Yeah, cool. You can check out the documentation of gcloud yeah if you like so the next thing we are going to do is since we are running this on say container lab and we did a lot of action on the cloud share so here are just some basic linux command that can be of help to you so mkdi out make directory and it's to create a new folder so ls stand for list and the action item is to list files and folder in the directory so we also have the apt I think get update, which is to update package manager library. And we have the MV. MV stands for move, so move a file. We have the PWD, which means present working directory. So people may think this is password, no. So it means present working directory. And the action item is to return your current location. So we also have command, we have CD, which is to change directory. So change location to another folder. We also have the CAT concatenate, which is to read content of a file without using an editor. We also have the ping action, which is to signal to test reachability of a host. So if you are on a server and you want to see if you can connect to another server, so you can ping to that server with the ping command. We also have the CP, which stands for copy, to make a file copy. And we have sudo, which stands for super user do, to give higher administration privilege. So for tax one, we have to enable the Cloud One API and configure our Cloud Shell environment. So this code would enable the Cloud One API. So still on our Cloud Shell, paste this. Just wait for it to get processed. Yeah, you can see our API has been enabled. Our Cloud One API has been enabled. You can enable it with the UI also. So let me just step. If you want to enable with the UI. You can go to yeah, from the navigation menu you can go to api and service you'd see that on the more products so from api and service you can click on enable api and service and you are going to see that uh, the cloud on api has been enabled for you can just search for it so when you click on this then you click on um, cloud on api and you see that it has been enabled with our code Connect. Yeah, got it. So you can see that this API is already enabled for us. So cool. Let's just go back to our cloud shell. 
So if it was not enabled, you can just then you would have an option to enable it here. So the next thing you want to do is next thing you want to do is you want to set up a default region, a default compute region for this. So we are setting our region for this lab to US Central One. So I'm just going to do that. Yeah, so that's updated. Also, we want to create an environmental variable location, and we want location to stand for US Central One, which we already configured as our default region here. So, just so anyway, I have location in my code. It actually means US Central One. Yeah, that's all with enabling Cloud One API and configuring your Cloud Shell environment. The next thing we want to do is we want to write a simple application so the first thing is you have to make a directory so we call, we'll make the directory we call it hello world and we'll see the into the directory hello world so here we have so i'm joining the code together the first part is to make the directory and cd is to just then move into that particular um, directory and you can see that here we are on hello world so then let's open the editor parts here Open in a new terminal, and the next thing we want to do is we want to create a package the JSON file, then add some documents into it. So you can do it in you can do it in two ways. You can more often than not do it from Cloud Shell, but sometimes you can just um, create it on with the Cloud Editor also. So to do that, just go to your package.json. So I'm going to come here, a new file. I'm going to name it package.json and OK. So after doing that, I'm going to paste this code into it here. And you can, as you can see, paste this code. So after pasting, I need to save it. But if you are doing it on Cloud Shell, so you would have a, then you need to run this nano code. When you run this nano code, it will open. So let me just show you. If you are doing it on Cloud Shell, open terminal. When you want the, to use this nano code, and when you use this nano code, it shows all this thing. But since I've already pasted this, I don't need to do any other thing to it here. I'm just going to cancel out of this. Yeah, fine. So I'm just I'll just keep to using the um, editor. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create a new file which is the index.js and copy. Let's copy the name of the file and I paste this into it. So create a new file also name it index.js then copy the necessary configurations of the app and you are doing and don't forget to save yeah so after saving that's all for tax 2 for tax 3 we have to containerize our application and upload it to the artifact registry so to containerize we'll be using a file named docker file the containerization and we make sure it's in the same directory as the source file so a docker file also so same directory as this new file and docker file okay so start name in docker file then we paste this code into it so this thing that I are doing, like I said, you can also do it on your cloud shell. Then control S. Then the next thing you want to do is we want to build our container image using cloud build by running the following command here. And we've set it to use the same directory as the Docker file that we are using. And also we have an environmental variable here, which is the Google Cloud project. So this Google Cloud project represents our project id it's it's a default environment available on cloud shell already so you copy it then go to cloud shell and paste your code here then you paste it it's uploading the necessary thing and to create it using cloud build so when it's done we continue Let's just wait till it's complete. So 
Yeah, it's complete now. Okay. So for those of you who don't know what cloud build is, cloud build is a service that executes your build on GCP. So it executes a series of build steps where each build step is run in a Docker container to produce your application container or let's say other artifact and push it and push it to cloud registry in one command. So it's more it's it's majorly used in in building and deployment. So for the CI C D pipeline you can just use your cloud build to automate your build once and for all. So the next thing you want to do is you want to we want to list the container images associated with our current project using this command. So let's see the containers that our cloud build has um, created from the command. So we start here. And you can see, so this is this is the container part that we have here in this um, in this part, this GCR quick lab, this part. Yeah, cool. So let's go back to our next instruction. So the next thing I want to do is I want to run and test the application locally from Cloud Share. So using the standard Docker command, Docker run, this and this. This is the port that we are using. And this is the path to the image that we created. So like I said, this this is an environment available representing our project ID. And if you just um, see look at this look at our project ID, you'd see that um, it tallies with what is here. So it's still the same thing. As what is here this is also our project id and you can see that it tallies with this so let's keep going we'll paste the next code then click on enter so let's see it's going to pull from the container part yeah you can see and down it has downloaded newer image for this which is the latest so the next thing we want to do is we want to preview our application I want to preview it on the browser and see if it's actually live so i'm going to do a web preview and i'll preview on port 8080 so let's see if it brings up oh nice so this is the application we created l world and you can see that it's live on cloud view with the web preview the step is to deploy to cloud one now that we've tested our application is actually i'm going to deploy to cloud one and i'm going to use the g cloud on deploy image then this is the path to the container image and I'm also going to allow unauthenticated access so that it can be accessible to the public. So using this code, copy it in our cloud shell, then click on enter. So here's our service name and hello. So I'm just going to press enter and you can see it's deploying the container to cloud run. Let's wait for the process to get complete. Maybe I'll just um, fast forward it and see at the end. Cool. So you can see we've deployed our application on Cloud One, and you can see it has been deployed and is serving 100% of traffic. That means it's only um, a version of the app that it's live, and that particular version is just taking the whole 100% of the traffic. So with Cloud One, Cloud One helps you to you can deploy multiple version of your application with cloud one also that's one of the advantages of cloud one so let's say maybe when you are testing out a new version of your app you can just then um, deploy the new version of your app and just then um, redirect maybe 20 percent of the traffic to it something like that so since we only have one version here it's just taking 100 percent of the whole traffic that we have yeah which is cool like i've said you've deployed an application package in a container image to cloud one and cloud one automatically and horizontally scales your container image to undo receive request so it can scale down when the demand decreases and it can also scale up from zero to a large amount of number during your peak time so the next thing we want to do is let's check our navigation menu and actually see the service running on cloud run so you're going to come here then you can navigate to cloud run so you navigate to cloud run let's see if we can see our our apps that we deployed it is when you click on hello world and you can see this is just uh, some metrics that you can see here so there are some service levels objective if you want to do that a whole lot of things that you can do with your application on cloud run this is the URL to the app 
click on it it's still the same hello world that we've been seeing then so cool we've created the app we saw that it works on our machine then we deployed it to cloud one so the next thing and which is the final tax is as you expect is just to clean up so since this is the lab clean it clean it up and also when you are not using your application or you you feel you don't you don't need it again you can also clean up so that you don't incur a lot of billing by, by just wasting your gcp credits so to delete you use the gcloud container image delete and this is the path to the container that we deployed on cloud one so click here go to your cloud shell as usual we're just going to drag our cloud shell back up and i want this code click on enter so it's, it's asking me to confirm if i really want to delete it yes i want to do that so it's deleted the next thing i want to do is also i want to delete the cloud run service after i've deleted the container image i want to delete the cloud run service so with gcloud run services delete this is the name of the service that i deployed hello world this is the region that i specified US central one cool so i'm just going to paste this here and also want me to confirm if i want it to be deleted if i want it to be deleted yes so it's deleting yeah the service is deleted so let's see if we can still see our service on cloud run we've deleted it so let's just see so you can see our cloud run is empty it's going to restart it and you'd see that um, it's still empty yeah so our cloud run is empty now because we deleted so deleted of this lab we started with enabling the cloud run api and configuring our cloud shell environment then we wrote a simple application and we containerized our application and uploaded it to the active factory registry so after that we deployed it to cloud run then we cleaned up so that we would not incur unnecessary billing on our app so we can do a lot of things on cloud run like i mentioned it helps in a, a or b testing you can test multiple versions of your apps and it helps you deploy your application on your website quickly because you don't need to specify um, servers or anything it, it do that for you automatically you just need to input your code in and your services up and running so thanks very much for staying true till the end of this lab if you enjoyed this lab make sure you give it a like i want to see your comments regarding your thoughts in the comment section and share with your loved ones bye for now